The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 66 Pressure Starlight scurried along at Maple's side, opting not to ride on the mare's back. It took more effort, leaving her with marginally less concentration to watch the ponies they passed in the street, which was just as well because more than half of them were looking at her. It still feels like that was a dream, she muttered, matching Maple's pace. Her ears folded as she looked up at her friend. They're scared, aren't they? They're keeping their distance. Yes, Maple answered, looking straight ahead. They are. Would you rather they not? Well, no. Starlight's head drooped and her tail with it. But I don't want them looking at me like I'm a monster. It's the same thing. Whether they think I'm better or worse than everyone else... But none of them are going to try to change anything you don't want them to because of it, Maple comforted. And if they did, Arambai wouldn't let them. I don't know if you remember, but he said he wouldn't... She cut off. Actually, let's not mention that in public. The street ponies didn't seem to care, though they kept watching, staring, judging. Starlight forced her steps to stay proud, yet she didn't glare back. The last thing she wanted was to challenge any of them right then. Besides, it was something she would have to get used to, staying in Riverfall. They kept walking, and they kept being given a wide berth. Around them, Riverfall's vibrant reds and browns were muted by the overcast sky above the canopy, acting as a fitting backdrop to the unblinking eyes that watched them pass. Ponies broke off conversations as they drew close. Some, who wouldn't have cared otherwise, started looking just to see what everyone else was looking at. Eventually, Starlight couldn't take it anymore and stopped. If you have something to say, you can say it, she loudly announced. I'm listening. The ponies blinked. One took a step closer. None said anything. Well, Starlight demanded, doing her best to mask her irritation. They said you came from over the mountains, a voice came from somewhere in the crowd, followed by its owner stepping forward. Did you really? The ponies ears folded. I wanted to see for myself if you looked like the type that could survive such a journey, but you're just a filly. A filly that turned palm and twenty others to stone, another countered. She's probably more powerful than Arambai. I bet she just teleported across. She did save the Griffin's boat, remember? A mare stepped out, nodding in agreement. Arambai couldn't do that. He even tried. I was there. Starlight sighed loudly, lit her horn, and a moment later encased herself in a large chunk of crystal. She waited for the ponies to gasp, suddenly remembering not to try to breathe, and dispelled it. I didn't turn anyone to stone, she said dully. I did that, and it's completely safe. The first mare to speak up raised her voice. So did you really come from across the mountains? Do you have anything that can prove it? If I had anything, I wouldn't want to, Starlight answered loudly enough for everyone to hear. Isn't this town a place where you don't poke into ponies' pasts? because I don't need to be reminded why I came here. She raised her ears. Besides, Arambai said we're not supposed to do things that make ponies not happy to live here. You can't go to Equestria. It wouldn't be fair if I told you about it. I've seen you riding her around all day, the first mare prodded, pointing a hoof at Maple. If you could really walk across those mountains, you should have the stamina to walk on your own. Why do you need a caretaker? Shut up, Starlight snarled, dropping into a crouch and lighting her horn. Leave her out of this. The mare didn't stop. I don't get it. You don't seem like the type to make up a story like that about yourself. You're not nearly charismatic enough, not like Gerardo. She briefly gave an oblivious smile, then continued. Did she do it for you? Another mare elbowed her harshly. Knock it off, Mangrove. You're gonna get crystalled. More importantly, you're being rude, another added. Do either of them look like they were interrupted by a jet of cyan light? Instantly, Mangrove's head became encased in gemstone, leaving the rest of her body to flail in panic. She immediately toppled, yanking at the thing and bashing it against the ground, unable to cry out. Starlight winced every time it struck, but her horn was completely fresh and it was easy to shrug off. After a moment, she let the mare go, but kept her horn lit and made sure everyone saw. Look, she demanded, I don't want to be famous or special. I'm not a hero and I'm not a villain, so don't try to make me one. You can think of a secret alicorn or a hobo from Iron Ridge. I don't care. I'm used to ponies not getting it, but don't you dare 
do anything to my friends, okay? We'd never, shouted back one of the ponies who had chastised the now fleeing Mangro. We're just curious, nothing has happened here for seven years and now both you and Gerardo showed up a few days apart. Her ears folded. We're curious. Please don't be mad at us, another added, or freeze us or run away. It's just been so long since we've been able to be excited about the outside world. A blue mare nodded. It doesn't even matter if what you say is true. We don't care. It would be interesting. She tilted her head. Like, what's an alicorn? Starlight clenched her teeth in a frown of indecision. They wanted to love her, most of them at least, and letting them do so would make them happier even if it didn't actually lead to any change in their lives. Unless it would. What if they try to leave? If she stoked dreams that would then fail them like Maples failed her? Would that be worth it? Then again, if they never were able to leave, they'd never find out that the outside world wasn't as good as they likely imagined it. But there couldn't be no catch. That would imply there would be an all-around good thing to let them love her. Maple, she asked, looking to the mirror for advice. Maple, who had been standing by, ready to intervene, but doing nothing for the whole exchange, simply shrugged. Who knows what the future has in store, Starlight? If I were you, though... Her eyes shone with the light of unshared knowledge. I'd let them. Tell them stories. Be nice to them now. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to hope for something good to happen? Slowly, hesitantly, Starlight nodded. Fine. Most of the crowd beamed. By that point, the density of ponies had roughly tripled, others from further away being drawn in by the noise and the flash from Starlight's spell. As they began to press closer, however, Maple raised a hoof, warding them back. I'm sorry, she apologized. I shouldn't have said it that way. We had dinner arranged with a friend and we're on the way. She blushed, hopefully. You're welcome to come to my house tonight, though. We'll be there and can talk until however late you want. We'll definitely be there, a mayor at the front of the crowd said, and several others nodded in agreement. The rest of the crowd parted, allowing a path for Maple and Starlight to resume their original trek to Willow's house. End of chapter 66